Welcome everyone. I'm Rabbi Jill Jacobs. I'm the CEO of Trua. And in these hard times, this is not how we want to be coming together, but it's really good for us to be together. It's hard to believe that this time last week we were preparing for Shabbat, for Shemini Atzeret and Simchat Torah with so much excitement and so much joy. And now we're entering this next Shabbat in a world that has been shattered completely. Some of us here on this call have family members and friends who are murdered or who are kidnapped in Hamas's brutal assault on Israelis last weekend. Many more of us have family members and friends who have lost people close to them and who are desperately worried about loved ones who are held hostage. And some of us are worrying about family members and friends who are deployed. So we're sitting with here, we're sitting here today before Shabbat holding each other in our grief, in our fear, and in our anger. And even in the midst of our grief, we also have space in our hearts for the Palestinian civilians who, by no fault of their own, are suffering and dying as a result of this war. That includes those who are killed in Gaza and those killed in revenge attacks in the West Bank. Trua this week has been following the lead of our Israeli human rights partners who, even amid their personal grief, and they have all lost people, they're calling for the opening of a humanitarian corridor, as are we, such that critical food, water, and medicine can reach Gaza, for the Israeli government to do everything possible to avoid additional civilian deaths. We're also terrified by the instructions today for more than 1 million Palestinians to evacuate northern Gaza within 24 hours. That's a feat that's impossible. So we're sitting here with all of this pain, both our own community's pain and also the pain of Palestinians who are also suffering. As Michal Sfard, a prominent Israeli human rights lawyer, wrote this week, Hamas committed an abominable war crime for which there can be no forgiveness. And yet the laws of war weren't designed only for situations in which our blood is cool, in which there's no justified anger or understandable desire for revenge. And Avi Dabush, who's a close colleague and friend, who is the head of Rabbis for Human Rights in Israel, who escaped with his life, from the Gaza envelope wrote, we are survivors of, our, of a massacre. And despite that, and per perhaps precisely because of that, it's clear to me that the killing of civilians in Gaza is a terrible thing. It's terrible because it is the opposite of our moral compass and our Jewish compass. Then he continues, it's a terrible thing because this war is between those who choose life and those who nurture despair and death. So we're here together to pray because that's what our community knows how to do in times of grief and fear. It is unfortunately a practice that's been honed through centuries of experience. We're gonna hold each other together here before we enter the precious 25 hours of Shabbat that we hope will be a Shabbat Shal Shalom. We're gonna give room for each other to mourn. We'll commit to each other that no matter what, we're always going to continue to believe in and work toward a better and more just world. So thank you for being here. And I'm going to turn this over now to my colleague, Rabbi Jenna Shaw. Hi, everyone. What a what a gift to be together in, in community. The rabbis instruct us that we're supposed to make ourselves a heart of many rooms. And as we sit here in the complex feelings, perhaps sadness, grief, 
anger, confusion, a sense of numb. Let the words of our Psalms and the words of our Jewish tradition hold us to allow our hearts to be wide just a little bit more and opening to all of the complex feelings that we might be holding and feeling in this moment. I'm gonna turn it over to Rabbi Margo Hughes Robinson, who's gonna lead us in Psalm 121. Thanks so much, Jenna. Shalomalo. Esa Thank you, Rabbi Margot. And I'm really, I'm particularly thinking up the words that you lifted up so beautifully about all who love God being at peace as we turn towards Shabbat with horrible news and fear for what is perhaps to come next. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Rabbi Sari Lawfer, who's going to lead us in Psalm 118. Right. We seem to be having some technical. Oh, here. No, oh, you're no. Got it? they were just waiting to find me. I think. Um, so I was going to say we're we're going to read just a, a little bit of um, Psalm 118, but I was just thinking when I was looking through this morning to find it right and thinking to myself, oh, it's one of the Hallel Psalms. It's one of the Hallel Psalms, which is sort of what kept going through my head and like it feels so incongruous. Um, and I was just thinking about the, you know, the heart of many rooms and and even just within this whole Psalm, if you find yourself later today, you know, reading through like the the number of emotions just held in these, in this one Psalm um, is is sort of incredible and, and a reminder to me of the, the depth and breadth of our tradition. And so we're gonna read, even though it starts with, with, with deep praise, Hodo Laranai Kito Kileo Lam Chasto. This doesn't necessarily, it doesn't at all feel like a time of Tov. Um, and I think we really are praying that it becomes a time of Chesed. Mihin Hametza Kaharatia Ahanani Baha Merchavia Mihin Hametza Kaharatia 
Ahanani Baha Merkavia Ahanani 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 Baha Merkavia Ahanani 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 Baha Merkavia Lilo Ira Maasel Maya Asali Adam All right, uh, just missing on there. Adonai li lo ira ma yaset li adam min hametzar karatia anani ba merchav ya may we from this incredible time and place of constriction may we find hope and answer in and maybe find ourselves um, and our communities in wide open safe and protected spaces. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Um, Rabbi Dr. Arya Cohen is going to lead us in Psalm 130. I can't remember in recent memory a week that has been more Mima Makim, that I have been more in the depths and looking for a way out and looking for a way up and turning right and left and not seeing not seeing people who I can who I can come together with from left, right and left and so this psalm i think is really where my heart is at right now shir hamalot mi mama kim krati khadunai Dunai shima bekoli, tiana is necha kashuvot, le kol tachanunai. Im avono tishmoria, adunai mi amod. Kim chas licha le man tivare. Kivit yadunai kivitan afshi, velidvaro ho hoti. Nafshi ladunai mi shomrim la boker, shomrim la boker. Yachel Yisrael Adonai, Kim Adonai Achesed Barbeim Ofidud, Vehu Yifdet Yisrael Mikol Avonotahav. Thank you. And thank you for uplifting the ways in which the words of our text and our psalms can just so powerfully speak to the exact emotional state we might be in at any at any given moment. I'm going to turn it to, to Rabbi Sharon Conanisfeld, who's going to share some words of prayer um, about freeing captives. Thank you, Jenna. <clears throat> Uh, before I share the prayer for captives um, that was written this week by uh, Rabbis Ofer and Rachel Shabbat Beit um I just wanted to acknowledge in this in this moment and in this space. I all week I've been sort of had reverberating in heart and mind um, the words from that we just read from Kohelet Le Shabbat of Eid Lachashot Veit Lidaber. There's a time for silence and a time for speaking. And I just want to be wanted to acknowledge that um, there's a part of me, I think a very human part of many of us, I suspect, that feels speechless in the face of all that we're witnessing. And just want to honor that speechlessness in this in this space. Um, I think a lot of us have felt compelled, been compelled to find words uh, to respond to what is unspeakable uh, this week. And as we move into this Shabbat, um, I pray that we will also be able to find space for silence, um, space to let ourselves feel at a loss for words, uh, space to feel humbled by the inadequacy of our words to touch the pain that so many are feeling. Um, and also um, to let ourselves feel humble about having easy answers about how to move forward. So I offer this prayer for the captives. 
אלוהינו מתיר אסורים, נשגב לדך, נשגב לעיתות בצרה. שלח הצלה שלמה ופדיון גמור לנתונים בשבי אויב. Our God, the one who raised Joseph up from the pit, be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Send complete rescue and full redemption to those held captive by the enemy. Chazki rucham havi ilahem et tfilatenu l'shomram meira. Strengthen their spirit and bring them our prayers that they be protected from all harm. Implant understanding in the heart of the enemy that they may return the captives in wholeness of body and spirit. Grant wisdom to the Israel Defense Forces that they may secure freedom for the captives without loss of life. תן לכל בני ובנות אברהם שרה והגר את עוז הרוח ואומץ הלב להתיר כבלי שבי ולחיות חיי חירות. Grant strength of spirit and courage of heart to all the sons and daughters of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar to release bonds of captivity and allow us all to live in freedom. יקראני ואענהו עמו אנוכי וצרה אכלצהו ואכבדהו, ונאמר אמן. They shall call upon me, and I will answer them. I will be with them in distress. I will rescue them and honor them. And we say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for uplifting those words and also just reminding us of what it means to be speechless and the holy power of, of speechlessness. I want to call on um, Rabbi Laura Brazley, who's going to lead us in powerful words between, um, written collectively between Israeli and Palestinian mothers calling for peace and justice and holding the ways in which their grief is sadly deeply familiar. Thank you for um, inviting me to be here and thank you for providing this space. Um, I think I wasn't been so busy all week trying to take care of others I didn't I don't think I realized how much I need to take care of myself this prayer all week long I am the mother to a 17 year old and all week long all I do is just keep seeing his face and and keep seeing his face on all of the faces that have been lost and this prayer I think that we have just incorporated into our service this coming uh tonight I think kind of speaks about the heartbreak of being a parent and watching all of this in this moment and what we most all long for, no matter how we understand our relationship with God. Let us light two candles for peace, two mothers, one pea, one plea, now more than ever, during these days of so much crying, on the day that is sacred to both our religions, Friday, Sabbath Eve, let us light a candle in every home for peace, a candle to illuminate our future face to face, a candle across borders beyond fear. From our family homes and houses of worship, let us light each other up. Let these candles be a lighthouse to our spirit until we all arrive at the sanctuary of peace. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. We're now going to come together for the Mourner's Kaddish as we conclude our time together. We typically say this prayer following the death of a loved one. And over the years, many of us have probably experienced moments of grief. And hearing the news from the ground brings about a deep, deep sense of acute grief. It might feel isolating might be feel terrifying and saying these words together in community is revolutionary and we're not jewish tradition teaches us that we're not meant to mourn alone and that's why we're here we're here to hold each other in our grief we're here to hold each other in our pain and we're here to say i see you and i'm with you 
and we're in this journey of grief together. And when we're ready, we can turn that grief into something more. But it's important in this moment to hold to hold that grief. So we're going to say these words of the Kaddish, the mourners Kaddish for the Israeli and Palestinians who have lost their lives um, in Hamas's deadly, deadly attack and the retaliation and violence that has come following. I invite if anyone wants to unmute to say the words Amen, um, an invitation to rise in whatever way you are able and say this in, in your in your spot in your location. Yitkadal vit kadash shemeraba. Amen. Ma divra kirte vam lik mahute. Bahayachon uvyamachon kaye de kobe Israel. Bagala uvizman kariv vimru. Amen. Yehishmei <laughs> 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 Amen. 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 May their memories be for a blessing and for peace as we go into, into Shabbat. May this one be a Shabbat. Shalom, Shabbat of peace. Thank you all for being here.